Hey everybody, welcome to our uh, Michaels Community Classroom lesson. My name is Emma. Um, I will be moderating this class today and we're joined alongside the lovely Sherry Ragsdale who will be teaching us um, how to do this really awesome craft. So today Sherry's gonna show us how to build from scratch a rustic looking farmhouse tiered tray. And the best part about this project is that you can get all of these items at Michaels. So I think without further ado, Sherry, are you ready to start? I'm ready. All righty, let's get started. Hi everyone, how are y'all doing today? Um, today I'm gonna show you how to make this two tier tray. Um, this one I made here, I uh, got the trays at Goodwill. So we're gonna do something a little different. Um, you can make a a tear tray with uh, wood plaques. You can make it with um, chargers. Um, there's all kinds of different surfaces that you can use to make a, a tear tray. But um, today, we're gonna use baking pans, um, cake pans. So um, first, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna turn, I'm gonna turn my big um, surface upside down and there's two different ways that we're going to put this together. We're either going to glue it together or we are going to, um, well, we are going to glue it together. Um, but I'm also going to show you how you can use, um, you can drill and, put, and screw it together to keep it, um, make it more sturdy. So first of all, um, I'm going to glue these little feet these to the bottom. I have my A6000 out. And so Sherry, why are you gluing these beads to the bottom of your tray now, as opposed to after you paint your tray? Just so that when I go to, when I go to paint, um, it'll already be on there and I won't have to worry about it for later. Actually, I was, for time purposes, I'm gonna use the hot glue gun. Okay, but normally you would use E6000. Yes, okay. just for, to make sure that it stays on there well. Mm -hmm. uh, Sherry, Ellen wants to know what you're using for the feet. Would you mind holding up one of those wood beads? Yes. Uh, let's see. It's so, just a... Yeah, little wood like turnings. A little doll head, I believe is what they are. And yeah, and obviously they're available at Michaels. Yes. And Sherry, what would you say the size of those are? Um. I'm going to say they're about a half inch. About a half inch. Yeah. Okay. So this one, I accidentally put the E6000 on, so we're just going to wash it off. <laughs> Sherry Cricket says that E6000 is their new favorite glue. I know that you use E6000 for a lot of your um, carpentry craft. Yes. Yes. It. it works really good and it works really well on like metals and wood yeah so hot glue that on there so usually we would uh, use the e6000 instead of hot gluing but for like i said for time purposes we're just going to use the hot glue awesome. all right so those are on there so now i went ahead and um since i'm going to drill mine as well i went ahead and drilled some holes into the um, pans. Um, to make the hole, I usually I would take a piece of wood, what scrap wood, and put it on the pan on top of the wood, and I'd get a screw, just a long screw, and just hammer it until it makes a hole. Um, okay, so you don't need any power tools to do this if you didn't have any at home. You could really just use it with like a hammer and some E6000. Right, well, for just to make the hole in the wood. Okay. All right, and if you are just going to use the the glue, that's fine too. You know, just to make it sturdier, I'm just gonna I'm just showing you how to um, screw it together so it'll be stronger. Um, so I also did it the same thing to the smaller pan. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start base coating with Adirondack 
or white Adirondack. For some reason, I get that backwards all the time. <laughs> so I'm just going to dip it in there. And what kind of paint is that, Sherry? This is um, Folk Art Home Decor chalk paint. Okay. It's my absolute favorite. Yes, it is an awesome, awesome paint. It dries fully matte. Um, we love using it here at Plaid for all of our large furniture pieces because you don't have to prime or sand your surface before you go ahead and apply your paint. It is super, super versatile. It comes in a really, really awesome color palette. Yes. So Sherry, Maddie had a really great, uh, great question. Uh, she wanted to know, does chalk paint mean I can write on it with chalk and erase it after, or is that different? So um, chalk paint is different than chalkboard paint. Chalkboard paint is what you'd be thinking of, um, what you would paint on a surface so that you're able to write with it on chalk and then erase it. So chalk paint, do you want to tell them a little bit about what chalk paint is, Sherry? Um, chalk paint is an ultra matte um, paint that you can paint on just about anything. Um, you can paint on wood, you can paint on metal, you can paint on glass. It um, levels really, really nicely. So, you know, if you're kind of a sloppy painter, it, it dries flat. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, it dries super ultra matte. That's why it's called chalk paint, just because it has that really matte chalk finish in the end. Yes. wet. <laughs> Didn't think that through, huh? <laughs> Sherry Cricket said um, they liked the finish of chalk paint, but uh, most of the times they put a wax on it. So it's not as mad as it would be without the wax. Yeah. And that's totally true. Um, our home decor line also has a really awesome wax that you can use to seal your finished projects. Um, so that that uh, wax is not matte, but if you were to just have your unfinished, unsealed piece, totally finished, but unsealed piece, then it would be super matte. Okay, let's set that I use chalk paint for everything. And I mean, even if you, even if you um, want it to be, have a shiny finish, you can always put a varnish on top of it that's, that's shiny. If you want a gloss or satin instead, which sometimes I do, I use it on anything, anything at all. I'm going to use my hair dryer for a second. So Sherry, people have a lot of really great questions. Um, Cindy wants to know if she needs to put a white base coat on her trays before uh, painting a color, say like red, with chalk paint. You can, but uh, 
honestly, I mean, the chalk paint covers really, really well. And sometimes we actually, we will use um, the chalk paint sort of as a primer on other projects that we, we use because it, there's like, there's no prep. You don't have to, um, and it has remove. really, it has really great hide. Yes, it, it does. So I, I wouldn't, I don't think I would uh, really do an undercoat of white before applying a color like red or a bright color. I would just go ahead and uh, start painting red right on the surface. Yeah. That's another great thing about the chalk paint is you don't have to, there's no prep. Yes. You just do it right on top of painted furniture, um, stained furniture, or, or, or anything else that's not necessarily furniture. Yeah. So Sherry, Sherry has a question. Oh, uh, they want to know. <laughs> they said uh, this looks like a very thin coat. Is that correct? It, it is. It is. I mean, it's it's not super thin, but I think it's the pan underneath that's kind of giving you the illusion that it's, yeah. it's pretty. I think if I, when I put another coat on it, I think it'll be. Um, it will definitely cover. Yeah. The rest of it. I'm going to blow dry this one really quick. So Sherry, people have a lot of great questions today. Ellen wants to know what type of brush you're using. I'm, I'm using the Folk Art Home Decor um, chalk paint brush. Okay, cool. Which it holds, um, it's great because it holds a lot of paint. So you don't have to keep going back into your, your jar. You can get a lot covered. And then someone had a question earlier. Um, they said, so the paint can be used on various materials like metal, wood, and acrylic. And yes, it totally can. Chalk paint is multi-surface. Um, one of our favorite projects to use with chalk paint is on mason jars. So um, it, it's obviously just for decorative purposes only, but it can be painted on glass, um, paper mache, wood, obviously metal like Sherry's doing today. It is a really, really versatile paint. And uh, as you can see, it's getting pretty, pretty coat. I mean, uh, I think this is going to be the only, uh, the yeah, last it's pretty coat opaque. That we're gonna use. Yes, thank you. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> Sherry Maddie said um, she likes um, that it looks kind of like ceramic with that white matte finish. Oh, yeah, it does. <laughs> that, that new. Uh, Oh, that was an awful noise. Yeah, that was an awful noise. <laughs> that new sort of uh, trashed terracotta. <laughs> yeah, it does look like terracotta. I'm gonna blow dry. Another good thing about the chalk paint is it dries so fast. Yeah, I know it does dry super fast. That's another reason why we like to use it as a base coat sometimes. Yes, oops, I missed a spot. Uh, Sherry, someone has a really great question. They want to know, um, they said they've never used chalk paint before. Is it easy to clean up? Oh yeah, just clean it with soap and water. Super easy. There is, there are, 
If you ask me, there are no downfalls to the child pain. Yeah. Sherry, Sherry has an, I'll, I'll let you go, sorry. Oh, Relax. sorry, I've got to warn you. <laughs> You're okay. Shoot. All right, so Sherry has another question. They want to know without the blow dryer, about how long will the chalk paint take to dry? Oh gosh, probably 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, maybe. Yeah. And then you can go ahead and start with your uh, the next coat. Yeah, someone was curious. They joined us a little late. Um, they wanted to know, are those cake pans? And yes, they are. Um, Maddie answered in the chat. Um, you bet you suggested maybe buying some cool trays or pans from your favorite local thrift shop, but Michael's does have cake pans. I'm sure he's using these uh, yes. Wilton brand ones today. Yes, they, yep. Um, yes, the, the, the uh, tray that I made back here, those came from, from uh, Goodwill, but yes, cake pans you can get at Michael's. Right. Yeah. Go Missed a spot. Big spot. Let's see, I feel pretty dry. So Sherry, what are you looking for to test the dryness of your pans? Like, is it a temperature thing or texture? Just touching to see if it feels, feels wet. Okay. There's still a couple of spots. I'm gonna go ahead and... Okay, so those are good to dry. We now we move on to the candlesticks. So we're gonna use these to go in between to make our tiered tray. Ooh. So let's go ahead and You're really show, showcasing uh, how multi-surface this paint is today. <laughs> yeah, now we just need a couple more surfaces. <laughs> yeah, right. We need I, mean, I mean, you could actually, let's, this could be a glass candlestick. Um, mm -hmm. So someone wanted to see, um, they said, may we see the original finished product that was um, in their class description. So yeah, right behind Sherry is what Sherry's making today, that cute little tear. If you can believe it, these cake pans and these candlesticks will turn into that really gorgeous tiered tray. All right. 
hair dryer again. We would do without our hair dryers. I know. I was just gonna say. I was just gonna say. Let us know in the chat if you guys um, have a hair dryer in your um, craft room at home. It's a total <laughs> lifesaver. Okay, so that one is pretty good. And then I had this one, and it was previously painted, so I'm repurposing it. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a. Uh, a one inch ball and I'm going to put this on top as a little topper. Um, I'm going to go ahead and once again use my glue gun for time sake and do that on top of there. Sherry Ellen said that their blow dryer is in their bathroom but they think they're going to have to move it to their other room. <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, I have to go back and forth yeah with mine mm -hmm. at home. And Maddie said, we love an upcycle. Yeah, it's always good. Me too. Mm -hmm. One of my most favorite things to do. I love the way this is turning out, Sherry. I would never think to get all those little wood pieces and to glue them onto candlesticks to make that really beautiful tray. Well, thank you. And Sherry, okay, Ellen, Ellen wants to know um, what size ball that is that you glued to the top of your stick. I believe it is a one inch or one and a quarter inch. Okay. I mean, you could you could glue anything. It could be it could be like a finial from a um, curtain rod. You could use um, a Danielle from a lamp. I mean, anything could go as, as a topper. Okay. So Maddie wants to know, we have lots of questions today. That's awesome. Maddie wants to know what the purpose of that ball is on top. It's just decorative. So you don't have the, the top of the candle holder exposed. Sherry Cricket said, I love this idea. Just got to figure out what color to use. I'm going to find a place in my craft room for storage, not necessarily for decoration. Oh, no, that would be really cute. Yeah. I'm going to use a blow dryer again. <laughs> So Sherry, someone wants to know, can you use acrylic paint alongside chalk paint? So chalk paint is acrylic paint. It's just a little bit of a different kind of acrylic paint. You totally could. You could add details with regular acrylic paint like um, our folk art paint, but um, there's just so many benefits to using chalk paint for a piece like this. It is ultra matte. It takes way less coats. It has a great coverage, great hide. Um, obviously it's multi-surface. So that's why we're using it for this craft today. Okay, now we're going to do the fun part. We're going to put it together. Um, so first, um, if you were going to use the glue, then you want to go, want to go ahead and, and add your glue to the center. Um, for those of you who are just joining or joining later, I went ahead because I'm also going to show you how to drill or screw all of this together um, as well as um, gluing. So if you're gluing, you don't need to have the hole in there. But I went ahead and hit the hole. Um, and Sherry, so. for some like carpentry newbies like me, what is the difference between just gluing it together as opposed to actually screwing it with like a power drill? Well, the screwing it will definitely make you know make sure that it's going to hold together. It'll it, it's it won't. Sturdier. Huh? I'm it's sorry. Just sturdier. Yeah. Yeah. Just just sturdier. Okay. Okay. So. Um, on these uh, candlesticks, they have like a little screw. It's the bottom is screwed in. So I'm going to unscrew that little screw. Whoops.
Cherry, someone has a really good question. They want to know, how do you locate the exact center of the tray? Well, you could do it several ways. You could like trace around it on a poster board or a piece of paper and then cut out the circle and you could fold it one way and then fold it another and then open it up and you'll have like a crisscross where all the folds are and that will that can show you where your middle point is. That's a great tip. Okay, so now we are going to screw our first. I took the screw out so that it wouldn't interfere when I'm ready to screw uh, through the wood, I mean, through the pan. So I'm gonna glue this back on. All right. So now I'm gonna turn it upside down. Screw right here. Are you using the same screw that you just removed from the candle or is that a new screw? It's a, it's a different screw. So we're just gonna insert it in the hole there. And then I have a, my power drill here and I'm going to just screw it in. Them. So, there we have the beginning. Tray. So next we're going to do the same thing, but now I'm going to go from the top of the, the smaller tray into the candlestick. What? I did not pre drill my holes. <laughs> <laughs> my, my bad. So, no problem. <laughs> There's always a fix to every crafting mistake, yes. right, Mary? Yes. And that it, was so if that so that's a great you know little moment though. If that were to happen to someone at home, would you use E6000 to glue that back together? Yeah, okay. you, would, you could, or you could use wood glue. Um, I should have pre-drilled my hole first. So that's you what happened there? You, you wanted to pre-drill your hole? Yes. And so that, so I don't even really know what that means. So that means that you screw a hole in before putting your screw through, right? Yes, and actually, if you, I don't know if you can see, but there's already like a little place where um, you want to put the uh, drill bit. That was a rookie mistake. <laughs> For me. I know. Okay. All right. Try that again. So Sherry, our friend Sherry, uh, said this is so easy to assemble. Looking forward to creating quick directions. So I can send these as gifts to, and people can easily put them together. It will save lots of shipping fees in a much larger box. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Much better. <laughs> now I'm just going to touch it up before I glued it. Okay. And, and so. We're in. So Sherry, Ellen said, so obviously if you used glass pieces as the risers, you would have to use E6000 instead of drilling. Yes, absolutely, yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to glue my top piece. So, use, and for time's sake, we're gonna use a hot glue gun again. Okay. And then, on top. All right. I'm going to blow dry where I just painted. Okay. 
Okay. Now we're going to dry brush to add a little bit of age to it. And Carrie, I cannot believe, like, I really can't believe you just put that together in 30 minutes. What's so crazy about it is it's cake pans. I know. They don't look like cake pans anymore. No, they definitely do not. Um, so now I'm going to dry brush the whole thing, and I'm going to use uh, this <laughs> stencil brush. I'm just going to offload some of the paint and then just begin to, like, Age. I don't know, can you see what's going on here? Yes, we can. I just dry brush it. So Sherry, um, Ellen wants to know what you mean by dry brush. So when you dry brush here, you want to make sure that your brush, and it doesn't have to be a stencil brush, it can be any brush, it's, as long as it doesn't have any moisture and it's not wet or anything. And you just dip it in the paint, and you're you're basically just um, painting with a dry brush. So you're offloading like most of that paint. Yes, you want it because you don't want to get a lot of paint on your surface. You just kind of okay. just want to. When you get a chance, Sherry, would you mind showing us the bristles of your brush on the overhead camera, just so we know how much paint's on there? Sure. Let me dip it in here again. So, see, so yeah, I start off with, oh, where are you? There, about that much. And then, and then you're gonna offload. Off. Yeah, then I'm gonna offload. Yeah, so Sherry, Sherry's using an, a large stencil brush and she is um, getting a little bit of paint on her brush and then she's removing most of that paint from her brush, just in case you're just tuning in now. And you could, I mean, you could use the same brush that, I mean, I just used to paint the whole thing. It's just that it was still wet, so. Sherry, Maddie said, definitely pretty, but knowing the amount of delicious treats I would want to pile onto it, I think I'd have to drill mine to make it strong enough. Yeah. <laughs> Another good thing about drilling it is it's, you don't have to wait for it to dry. You can yeah. just go ahead and finish it. Oh, well, Sherry, would you mind see. letting us know, sorry to keep interrupting you, would you mind letting us know that chalk paint color that you're using as the um, distressed color? So first she yes. used white Adirondack to base coat it. Yes, and this is Parisian gray. Parisian gray. Yes. So Sherry, KM has a really great question. They want to know, was the top screw extra long to reach the hole you drilled? Yes, um, it was two inches long. So you, you definitely want to make sure that it's long, long enough because it's got to go through the cup of the candle holder. So. Yes. No method here. You're just kind of just brushing. Just randomly kind of. And I'm, I'm not sure if I said this in the beginning, but the reason why I put um, the, one of the big reasons why I put the feet on the bottom of my tray is because of the screw. If the screw, if you can see, if the screw was um, on the bottom and you didn't have these feet, then it would, it would wobble. Okay, so. that's a great tip. And now I'm gonna show you another little trick. Um, I'm going to show you how to look, make it look like the paint is peeling off of it. And I don't know if you can see, putting a little bit of paint on a plate. And I'm just using this little like half inch square cube, wood cube. And I'm offloading a little bit, maybe even offloading on my um, paper towel. And then I'm just going to 
scan. I don't know if you can see like where I scan in along. Yeah, that looks great. This would be great if it was like even like a darker color. Um, do we have a black or anything in here that I could show? Or a darker, oh, there's something right there. Yeah. Oh, this works. Let me show you, you can see better with um, a darker color. So this is just black. And that's chalk paint too? Yes, and this is, yeah. Sorry. So someone wants to know what are the feet? Those are just little wooden beads. Um, they're about, what'd you say, like half inch wood beads? Yeah. Whoops. Sorry. <laughs> and she just glued those on with hot glue for the purpose and the speed of today's class, but normally she would have used E6000. Sherry Cricket says they love this gray color. It's a little bit more muted as opposed to using like a black for a more farmhouse look. Yeah. I uh, that's what that's why I like it. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, it I mean I, I don't mean to say it makes it look a lot older, not necessarily like dirty, but like it's been around for a while. Okay, so now. Uh, Maddie said it makes it look antiqued. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, could you imagine like having this as a little kid, all the tea parties you would have? This would make a great gift for uh, the little kid in your life. Okay, so here's the magic. Can you see? That looks great, Sherry. And so did you it. offload your little uh, wood block there or not really? Yeah, I, I uh, I touched it to the paper towel just a little bit. Can you see? Mm -hmm. And are you just, are you dragging or are you like dotting? I'm just gliding it along and just touching it every now and then. Okay, so you're not pressing down all the time, just no. every so often. Yeah. Okay. So right now, Sherry is using um, Maui sand, which they have at Michael's. And I can and I can list that in the chat for you guys. Forget, can't see this, look this way. <laughs> And so Sherry, what is this little wood tool that you have? It is literally just a little wooden cube. Just it's about a half inch, I think. Okay. Sherry Myra says um, she really enjoys learning different antiquing techniques. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. This is my favorite. For a long time, I wouldn't share it with anyone. <laughs> 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 it's my secret, but now I have to. We're almost, almost done. Sherry, Cindy has a question that maybe you can um, answer as a crafting expert. They want to know any tips to keep glue tube from getting stuck after first use. Every time I get E6000, I can't get the top off again. You know, we had a conversation earlier about that. <laughs> yeah, you know, all I think, I, I also have that problem. So I think you just need to make sure you clean it probably before you put it back on there. Yeah, make sure it's wiped off really well before you put the cap back on. Yeah. And uh, Cricut has a great idea. They put a thin film of Vaseline on the thread of the cap before they cap it. Oh, that's awesome. That's a great idea. Yeah. 
Okay. I think we're just about done. So cute, Sherry. That looks great. Huh? Yep, I think that's it. So awesome. here we go. You're, uh, I don't know, we ha or do we have a front shot or, yeah, so. That looks awesome. Can you believe it's two candlesticks and two cake pans? Two cake pans, no, I'm, I'm really <laughs> So everyone, thank you so much for joining us for this Michaels Community Classroom class today. We want to give a big thank you to Michaels for allowing us to do this class with you all today. We love doing it. This class um, is being recorded. So if you um, miss something throughout the class, throughout the live stream, um, in a few days, it's going to be available on michaels.com under their Community Classroom page or on their YouTube channel. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. And happy Friday, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye.